start the recording. That's sharing. Stop recording. I don't see. Camera, microphone, volume. All right, I don't know. Okay. Um, who's in? We got Eridus, Sherry, Evelyn, Juliet, and Steve. Steve! I think that's kind of everybody that was here last week to do, so I guess we'll start. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so chapter 12 is about regression, where um, what we're doing is we're taking two values, because we're doing simple linear regression, so we're only going to have an X and a Y, um, and we are looking for ways to uh, explain the uh, dependent variable, which is the Y, based upon X, okay? And so, um, as I was saying in the, the other thing, you can actually have you know more than one x. You get a multiple regression, but our calculators don't do that, so um, they're not teaching it in this book. Um, you can have regressions that aren't linear, but they're not teaching that in this book either. So um, we're not going to worry about them. But if you go to your stat, we're going to be using the calc button here, and we're going to be starting with four, and if you go all the way through, there are a whole bunch of regressions. Now, the only two we're going to use are four and eight, all right? And the reason that there's, because they're both linear regressions, um, one is in AX plus B format, and the other is in A plus BX format. Um, so in this one here, the A is the slope and the B is the y-intercept. And in this one, the A is the y-intercept and the B is the slope. It just depends upon the question. Um, they're going to tell you they want it in one format or the other, so you want to make sure you, you use the right one. Um, but there's no preference. I mean, it doesn't, there's no, neither one is better than the other. They would just happen to have it in both formats because some things um, like it in slope-intercept format and some things like it in intercept-slope format. Um, that's the only reason, like uh, the application, but the the math and the answers will be the same. It's just they'll be switched. The numbers will be switched in different places. So you want to make sure you use the right one. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Yep. So um, in question one here, uh, they're looking at uh, swimming times for the 100 meter freestyle, and um, they have the Olympics. All right, and they started in 1912 and 1924 and 32 and 62 and 60. So they have the years, and then they have the times. Okay, and the first question is which one is independent and which one is dependent. So independent is the x variable, and the dependent is the y variable. All right, and so you have to look and figure out well which one would make sense to determine the other one. Would we, knowing the time, be able to predict the year? or knowing that you be able to predict the time, okay? And that's why um, the answer to the first one is year is independent and deep, the time is dependent because as the years go along, there was better um, training and better diet and, you know, exercise and people got healthier and stronger. And so as the years go forward, people are getting faster and better at most sports. So that's why... Uh, year would be independent and time would be dependent. Now, I'll let you know I really hate this question because um, we shouldn't be using year, the actual year. We should be saying that uh, 1912 is year zero and then go from there because years don't have um, a real zero time because, you know, technically, you know, the 
the first year is like four billion years, four and a half, five billion years ago when the Earth started. Uh, time is a construct that we've developed, and so it's not real. Um, but if you say this is the starting point, this is year zero, and then go from there, then it has an actual zero and it makes more sense. So these, they should have said that 1912 is year zero and then gone up from there and they could have added how many ever years after that, but they don't do, they didn't do that. But in real life, if you're really going to do regression, you should do that. Okay. So that's just my um, venting. All right. The next one they ask us to do is graph it. So to graph these, we're going to go to stat, and we have to put the information in. So that video you made was super helpful with question number. Three. Oh, good. Yeah. I was able to just look at that. I don't know if you can see my cat. He's... Oh, look at that tail. Yes, he's a big monster. He's part oh mountain God. lion, I think. Get out. <laughs> no, I, I... <laughs> so this is Nugget. He's all, we got him last year. They found him at a, at a McDonald's. Um, so they named him Ronald, and so we didn't like that. We so we changed it to Nugget because it looks like a chicken nugget. Yeah. Three point one. Okay. So after you've put your data in, you can graph it uh, using stat plot. So second stat plot, and what we want to do is we want to turn the graph on. So on, and the first one here is a dot plot. Okay. What it will do is it will plot. The sc sorry, scatter plot. It will plot the x and y axes okay you're in the way all right um where yes you're a good cat uh, it will uh whatever you put in for the list one is the x and whatever you put in for list two is the y and then these here are just dots you know what color shape dot you want to see but if you press press on okay make sure it's on and then make sure it's the first one here because we were using this a uh, while ago for histograms and um, uh, uh, box and whisker plots. So you want to make sure it's the first one that's selected. And then if you go to zoom and stat, which I think is number nine, what it will do is it will graph and set the window so that you can see everything. All right. And so now I can see my graph, and then I can compare it to the ones that are here. And um, what I have is I can see that these two aren't obviously right because they're going up. I have to look and see, okay, well, which ones are right on the ones going down? Well, I can see, okay, the, it, there's no outlier up here at the top. It doesn't go up and then down. It's just straight. So I can. So that's why this one here is your correct answer. You can see, you know, those two points are the same, and it, you know, does actually look exactly like this graph here. So, all right, and you'll be able to do that for each one of these. All right, you're gonna take my headphones off. Okay. Uh, does it appear that there's a relationship? Yeah. I mean, as time goes along, the um, speed goes down. Uh, you're awful, cat. 
Okay, so there is some kind of relationship. Is it linear? Eh, maybe not linear, but there is a definitely a relationship. And now they want us to calculate the equation. Okay. Um, sometimes you'll see it say least squares. Sometimes you'll see it regression. Sometimes you'll see it say line of best fit. They're all the same thing. All right. Um, they're just different ways of saying it. And they want it in A plus BX form. So, like I said, when we go to stat and calc, we want it to be in linear regression A plus BX form. So that's number eight. If they'd wanted it in AX plus B, they're going to tell you that, and uh, you do number four. Um, if you notice here, you want to make sure that the value with the x is, you know, where the x is supposed to be. Okay, so this is going to be your slope. So we want to make sure that that's the right thing. So I go to linear regression. I hit enter. Oh, actually, before I do that, let me, because um, right now, oh, I, I'll guess I can show you. So when I do mine, I have my list one and list two as my X and Y's. I have nothing in the frequency and I have nothing in stored. And I'm just going to go down to calculate. <coughs> and when I do that, I get my format that it's in, A plus BX, which is the one I wanted, where it tells me what my slope, my Y intercept is. And it tells me what my slope is. And then it also gives me r squared and r. So you guys probably don't have this at the moment. All right. And so what you need to do is you need to turn on diagnostics, which, again, is one of those things I don't know why they don't just have on when it starts. So you have to go to the catalog because I have no idea where it is. I, it, it's in one of these buttons somewhere, and I really couldn't tell you where. So second zero brings up the catalog of all functions that there are. Just go to chat. Yeah, I figured. Uh, what did I say the format are? Um, I'm not sure, uh, Julia, what would you mean? Oh, the, for, the format by the questions, I think. Um, so it just depends upon um, what they want, which order they want the uh, y intercept and slope. So sometimes it's in y intercept slope, and sometimes it's in slope y intercept. It just one of those. So in catalog, they're in alphabetical order. So if I just press a letter here, it'll bring me down to whatever letter I need to go to. I need to go to D. And you need diagnostic on. And so when I hit enter, and I hit enter again, it just says done. It doesn't look anything happened. But what it, that does is it turns on the, um, the R and R squared. So that when you do the calculate for your regression, it gives you your correlation of coefficient, which is this one here, and your coefficient of, uh, I can't think of it. But basically, this is the percent of y that's explained by x. So we can see that 90, it's the, according to this, 90% of the variation in time can be explained by year. So that's a pretty decent amount. Um, when we put in our values, OK, so 603, 430, and this is negative. OK, so you got to make sure you put the negative sign in. I got to do it again. I was doing the wrong thing. So make sure you put the negative in here. Plus negative <coughs> zero two seven six. All right, so that's important. And it'll have the X. All 
Okay. So it's important to make sure you have both of those values and put them in the right order. Um, then it asks you what is the coefficient of uh, correlation coefficient. Well, that's just R. So if you didn't have that, that's why you have to have this question. And again, you make sure you have the negative because that tells you that it's going down. It has a negative correlation. Um, and all correlation is is how close the um, points are to making a straight line. All right. So at, the numbers go from negative one to positive one. And so negative one means it has a perfectly negative correlation. All the little points are exact in an exact line. Positive one means that it's a positive relationship and that it's going up. And the closer it is to zero it means that there's less uh, correlation, less uh, um, explanation of the values. And so um, Just look here. Um, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yep. Okay. So here, correlation. So as it's the the, the correlation just kind of shows that the points are closer to the regression line, whereas here they're a little off. Okay. Um, there's a lot of points that are going in no particular direction. Uh, we can still see that it's going up, though. So they they just kind of break up uh, what correlations are, and um, it allows us. And this here has no correlations. So we could draw a line in any direction, and it really wouldn't matter, right? But the closer it is to one, the closer the points are to the actual line. Is really all that that does. So it explains. Um, So yeah, you can see here, um, perfect correlation, pretty good, low, zero. Um, like it's kind of hard to, you can tell that it's going up, but that's about it. You can tell it's going down, but that's about it. And the closer they are to getting to positive or negative one, the closer they are to being in a straight line. That's a better one. I like that one graph better. All right. So this has a correlation of 0.95, 1, 2, I guess, all right. And then they ask you, is it significant? Well, um, they don't tell you how to find if it's significant except in the book. Um, there's a table in the book um, for chapter 12. And I added it, so it's right here in your um, in the in Blackboard. And so what it is is it has degrees of freedom of n minus two because there's two variables. There's x and y, so we have to take up both variables. Um, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11 uh, items. So 11 minus 2 is going to be 9. And so what we do is we look at this value right here. And we say, is our correlation the point, where it turns off, just the 0. 0.9512, is that bigger than 0. 0.6? And the answer is yes. So if this here is bigger than our coral, than this number, then it's significant. And that all that means is that it's useful for um, doing uh, estimates. Brenda can't hear anything. Um, OK. <laughs> Good, because I didn't have to fix that. <laughs> All right. 
The next thing they're going on to do is now, now that we have this equation, use uh, use it to figure out, estimate uh, times of people um, during specific years. All right, and so what we can do is there's there's two ways to do it. We can use the table, or we can use the graph. But either way, we still need to put the equation in, which was here. Six o. Four three zero minus zero point two seven six, and then the X button is right here because we need to make sure we have that X, otherwise it's just a straight line. Okay, and so if we go back to our graph, we can see how it's working here. Okay, we can see the line. This line allows us to um, find values. Okay. And so if I go to trace, what the first one is, is it gives me all the x, y points that were in there. And if I move up and down, it changes between the two of them. And as I move left or right, I can move up and down the line. Just like when I'm here, I can move left and right, and move up and down the points. All right. If I get an exact value of 1932, I can just type it in. And it will find 1932 and give me on that line and give me the, the value. So um, we can see that in 1932, the time was 66.8, but we estimated it to be 70.2. All right. Because there's error in there, we can see that it's not perfectly lined up. It's close, but it's not perfect because we don't have a correlation of one. If we had a correlation of one, then it would be exact. There wouldn't be any error on them. And we can do 1984. And we can find that time as well. All right. What we can't do, they ask is, well, why are they different? Because these are actual times and these are estimated times. Notice for 1984, our estimated time was pretty close. We had 55.92, and we estimated it to be 55.85, whereas 1932, we were off by almost four seconds. We're here, we're off by almost, we're just a few hundredths of a second. So it, it's better, like when the lines are close, that there's less of an error. Um, yeah, so. They're, it's a good line. You know, our correlation is high. It is negative. Um, we don't have, seem to have any pattern. We could find what they call residuals, which are the differences between the estimates and the actual values, and see if there's a pattern in those. Um, but they don't ask us to do that. The last one asks us to estimate the time for the 2016 Olympics. All right. Well. The problem with the graph version is that 2016 isn't on there. It's not in the window. No, actually, it is. It goes up to 2017. Oh, I didn't realize. So if I'm on trace and I go to 2016, trace. 2016 Olympics. I can get a, a time. Uh, but if I wanted to do the 2020 Olympics, which obviously are now in 2021, um, it, it's going to give us an invalid answer because it's not in the window. OK. It's not in the space okay, that, they've, that they've shown in the graph. So to make sure that, that we get a value that we can use, we can um, add to it. And we want to make sure that this also has the same. It's also in this as well, so it might make that zero. And as we go along, we could test values that are outside of the range. The problem with that is that they're outside of the range. Okay, it's not in. We can only use to estimate in the space that we have information for. 
All right. Um, it's we we tend to do it for areas that are outside of that, just as a way to guess what's going to happen next. But because it's outside of the domain, it's not actually useful. All right. Things could change. Maybe we get to a point where that's as fast as we can get. Um, uh, yeah, Brenda, I'm going to do another one so it's the same question over and over again. So um, with number two, you'll see the how it works again. Okay. And so every one of these is pretty much exactly the same. It's going to ask you all the same stuff over and over again. All right. Um, so for question two, we have some laundry detergent. And they only give us a few values. So stat, edit, clear these up. Remember, don't hit delete, hit clear. All right. And then you just plug your values in. And now we can graph them. Um, zoom stat. OK, that gives us our graph. Remember, to get to it, we have to put second stat plot, turn it on. Make sure this is on. And make sure you're using the scatter plot. And then zoom stat give us our graph okay and then we just compare it to the ones that we have here and again we can see only two of them are going up okay but this one looks like a curve and the other problem is that it has the the um, oh no it does have the cost but it doesn't even go up to ten dollars which is where the cost is so you can see that that's not doesn't make any sense and all the costs seem to be way off Does it appear to be um, a relationship? Yes, as it goes, size goes up, price goes up. What is the least squares line? Again, they wanted an A plus BX form. So stat, calc, we're going to go down to number eight, which is A plus BX form. List one, list two, everything else is fine. A calculate and it gives us our values. Okay, here's our A, three dollars and three point oh eight seven, three dollars three dollars and nine cents, I guess, for an empty bottle. And then we add about four cents for every ounce that it goes up. Okay, if you don't have the R and R squared, that's where you have to turn the diagnostic on. All of you should have that now. All right. And you can see our R is 0.9989, so almost one. Okay, these values are almost perfectly in line, so they must have worked on it to make sure that these values are perfect. Is it significant? Again, we look at the um, the book. We only have uh, four things, so four minus two is two. So for it to be significant, we have to have a 0.95, higher than 0.95. And we do. We have 0.998. Right. So this is a significant um, equation. If it, we had a 50-ounce bottle, well, now again, we're just going to calculate this. So we go to y equals, put in our equation, 3.087. Plus 0.036x, and we need the x. We'll go to our graph, and we find out a 50-ounce bottle. So we go to trace, go to that equation, and type in 50, and it will give us the cost of a 50-ounce bottle. 
Same thing for a 70 ounce bottle. Or um, I keep hearing popping. I don't know what that is. I, I thought it was some declaration, but I guess not. Yeah, well, I thought it was, but nothing. There's nothing on the chat, so I don't. Know. Oh, can you do two C? Okay. Like I hear it, and then it pops up afterwards. Okay, so to get the equation, it's stat calc, and then we have to decide, is it number four or number eight? And so we just want to make sure that it's in the same format, A plus BX, that's number eight. And so we have our values, our X values are in list one, our Y values are in list two. That's weird. It didn't ask us about which is the dependent and which is independent. And it gives us our equation. OK, and you're going to need that equation for the rest of the stuff. So you'll need it to do uh, D is this number right here. And then E and F, you'll use plot the equation in Y equals. Go to the graph, and then if when you do trace, you can test values that are in that range. Are there any outliers? No, I mean, this is almost a perfect line, so there's nothing in there. If we'd had a value that stood up way up here or way down here, then we could say that that's a possible outlier, and that's a way to calculate those, but again, um, you usually can you can usually see them, so uh, you'll know that they're an outlier. If I added a, a point in here, um, say 100 ounces, and this was um, $25. Zoom stat. See, now you can see that that's the outlier, right? because it's sticking way out from the rest of the equation. Okay, it makes no sense. Okay, something's wrong with that point. Okay. Usually they're they're fairly obvious if there's an outlier. And what outliers do is it really affects the equation. So if I do this again, Notice it's changed my whole equation, right? And my R has gone way down. Okay. Um, sometimes it brings your regression, your your correlation down. Actually, sometimes it increases it, um, but most cases it usually affects it in a negative uh, fashion because it's really, really. Um, uh, hurting the, let me get the stat. <coughs> Roger. Thanks. So I have um, 5.514 and 5.07. X. All right. So here's the first one. You can see here's the the second line, and you can tell that there's definitely error. Um, 
So for the rest of the values that it has for the equations. Um, right, you're going to use the uh, the trace key to get those. So for these here. For the, oh, sorry. What was that? Um, for like, I searched the 50 L's. How do you, okay. do you know how? Yep. yep. So if you do trace. Yep. Okay. And then move up and down to the equation that we want, which is, so this equation here. I just type in the number 50. Once oh. it's on that line, if I type in 50, it'll give me my value. Yeah, mine won't let me do that after I press trace. It just you goes into the number 50. Okay. You have to have the equation in y equals. Okay. Okay. So you have to put this equation under the y equals. All right. And that and way, then, yep. then it will show the line. Okay. So if you don't have the line, it because it has nothing to trace it from. So when you go to trace, you want to use the up and down. That will bring you to the actual line. And so now if I type in 50, it will calculate the cost of that. If I typed in 150, it would calculate the cost of a 150 ounce bottle. Yeah, so to find part D, you're using part um, C. Right. Or yes. Part D. Right. If you're using no, the right. equation, correct. Right. Uh, so, Julia, I was in Y2, I was just putting it, that was just an example of what an outlier would do. It's not a part of the question. Uh, question. I was just trying to, because it asks about um, in G, I'm sorry, in, in H, are there outliers? And I just wanted to show you what an outlier would look like and what it would do to the equation. So that's nothing, so that, that was not any part of the actual question. I was just using it as an example. Right, we're just using Y1. Um, here it asks us, should we use it to produce a 300 ounce uh, size laundry uh, bottle? And the answer is no, because it only goes up to 200. Right? So we don't know what happens after 200. So we don't know if the price goes down, if it levels off, um, if it spikes up. Um, so that's why we wouldn't be able to use it inside of that space. And then Jay had asked us, what is the slope? Well, so the slope is just like we did when we went through algebra, you know, y equals mx plus b. This is y hat equals b plus mx. They just turned it around, um, or they have it as a plus bx. But so in this case, b is our slope. So it's just that number. And then what does it mean? So as X, which is the amount of ounces of laundry detergent, goes up, the cost, which is what we're predicting, what is Y hat, goes up. Please do E again. OK. So once you have your equation here in, from C, go to Y equals and type it in. The X button is right there. All right, you'll need that for the X. Then you can go to back to the graph and trace. Okay, and the first one gives you the points. The second one gives you the line. And so from there, we can just type in whatever value we need in this space between whatever this number is and whatever that number is. Okay, if we look in the window, we can see anywhere between negative two ounces and 218 ounces. We can um, find the price. We can find out what that value is on that line. All right. Three I made the video for, which is um, so I won't, I'll skip that one. Um, four, it just asks us about, uh, does all the work, this correlation coefficient, is it um, 
significant and why? Uh, okay. Um, once we get the values in the list and go to linear regression, what do we do after that? Okay. All right, so I'll show you again on, um, so five is, I think this is five, four, you're just gonna compare it to um, this value and see is it significant and then what do you do with it from there? Five, which is based on those same numbers, um, they have the uh, decades. And so because this one here isn't a decade, they don't want you to use that one. All right. Um, oh, and uh, there's actually no work that they want you to do with it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So this one here, number five, because 2001 and 2000 to 2004 is outside of the domain range. Um, we can't use it right? because this has nine and nine is not in this range here. So because nine isn't in the range, we can't use it to predict. So that's why, um, so that's about five. So there's really only three problems. So I'll do three, I guess, again, and then um, uh, you'll have all of them. <laughs> I closed, it. I closed it. I closed it. Why did I close it? Oh, and so test three um, is available, and I extended it until um, next, until April 18th. So you have, instead of it being due the day after Easter, it's due the Saturday after Easter. So it's now due um, in two weeks. So it's open already. It's on chapters um, 9, 10, and 12, and you have two whole weeks to work on it. So you're welcome. Happy yeah, Easter. Thank you. <laughs> like I said, again, just because, like, I, I don't want you guys to have issues. Um, I want you to have as much time as possible. Um, let me bring up the questions again. Okay. All right, question three. All right, that, there. Okay, so to do the regression one more time, Stat, edit, make sure your data is clear. All right. You put your numbers in, birth is zero years old. Two, three, five, seven, ten, and 14. And then the heights. Okay, so we have our x and y values in, um, which is independent, which is which one should be the x, um, and which one should be the y, is it which one should be dependent. So if I knew the height, would I be able to predict the age? Or if I knew the age, would I, should I be able to predict the height? So that that's how we determine. In the next one, they want to know the graph. Um, well, we can see they're going up. So those two are wrong. In the other two, we have age as the dependent and height as the in age as the independent. I don't know why I get that mixed up every time. We have age as the independent and height as the dependent. And in the other one, we have height as the dependent independent 
and age is the dependent. Well, we just said this is the x, so we, that should be the x. So I don't even have to graph it. Either point, I can see which one it should be. Really wish they were better at making my, uh, multiple choice. Um, does there seem to be a relationship? Yeah, as age goes up, height goes up. Oh, and interestingly enough, these two lines have the same correlation. If I did uh, this is my x and this is my y and I did the regression, I would get the same correlation as when I do this is my x and this is my y. It's just kind of what happens. Because they're the same numbers and they're doing the same math. It's just that the, the, the equations will be different, but the, the correlation will be exactly the same. All right. Now it asks us to calculate <coughs> the uh, equation, and they wanted an a plus bx form. So stat calc number eight, because we don't want this one. We want a plus bx. These are in list one and list two. We go down to calculate, hit enter, and it gives us our equation. Professor. I must have typed our number in wrong. Which is, yes. Um, yes. So when I do on my calculator, when I go to the uh, eight, and yep. it gives me, it gives me, doesn't give me that whole list that you have there to plug in those values. Instead, it gives me just the actual equation that I picked. So do I have to put in like the second L1, comma, second L2? Oh, and the old one. Um, yes. Yes, 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 you do. So yeah, you would. I forget that the, I. It's been so long since I've seen an old, uh, the old calculator with that. Yes. So you would do L1 comma L2. And then just enter. Yep. And I believe actually, if you just hit enter, it would do, assuming L, it would assume L1 and L2. So you might even not have to do anything. Um, you could test it out. But yeah, if you do L1 comma L2, it will. Give you that it tells that tells it where the equation the values are. So, so the values that I get are, is like a e value and b equals whatever value. That's all yep. I get. Yes. That's all I'm supposed to get. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, no problem. Oh, I see my my mistake here. That should be a seven and not a not a four. Yes, so you don't get this table is what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, get that. Yeah, so you would just make sure it does L1 comma L2. Okay. And if you saw like very briefly, it actually had that up there. So, like, so I do have the, the A and B, but I don't get the R2 and the R. Okay, so to get those, we need to turn diagnostic on for you. Uh -oh. So second, second, zero. Zero. Okay, and that brings up the catalog, and mm -hmm. then go down to D. You can actually, if you type in the letter, it'll bring it down to, go to diagnostic on. Diagnostic. Okay, enter. When I get to diagnostic. Oh. And then hit enter again, and it will say done. Enter. enter. Okay. All right, and so then that, and I'll get everything else. You'll get everything else. Yeah, I don't know why they don't have it on in the first place. Okay. <laughs> Again, you. it's one of those it's one of those dumb things that they just don't turn on, which doesn't take any extra space except it drives everybody crazy because they don't know where it is. And I've had this been using this calculator since the nineties, and I have no idea where it is. <laughs> <laughs> don't know where it exists. <clears throat> okay. Upon it accidentally one time, but I have no idea where it is. <laughs> okay, so the B values we just plug into those. Um, yep. Yep. Okay. So make sure that so the A is going to be your you want to make sure this because it's A plus B that matches. Otherwise, if you did um, stat calc for 
it's going to give us the same numbers, but it says it's an A X plus B form. Okay. So notice they're backwards. Okay, and sometimes people will do that by accident. Um, the on the problem. So, so yeah, so if you look on this, like, because if I have it in A. Plus, oh, I see. I see. Plus B format. Mm -hmm. The 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 thing that should have been where the B is is. A because I typed it in backwards. That's all. Okay. All right. I, I asked. I asked it to do the other one. So just make sure you choose the one that it wants. Okay. All right. Um, your correlation coefficient is right here. Is it significant? Again, we just go to that uh, table and we check. And it's I don't remember how many things there were, but we compare it to the the right number. If it's bigger, it's yes. Uh, and then we do the same thing to calculate the ages, the height of ages. So we go to y equals, we type in our equation, 5.088 plus 7.095x. And zoom stat. And then we can find the height of a one-year-old with tracing. Trace, go up, type in one, and it gives us the height of a one-year-old, and it will give us the height of anything up to whatever this window is, up to a 15-year-old. So eventually, uh, does it appear to be a good fit? Yes. Um, are there any outliers? No, we can see that on the line. There's nothing that's sticking out anywhere. Um, a 63-year-old. Um, so we have to change the window to make sure that it, it to accommodate that. So you want to be put into 100 and height of 1,000. All right, and then we can type in with the trace. We can find the height of a 63-year-old, and we find out that it's 512 centimeters. And they're like, "Does that make any sense?" Um, <laughs> uh, no, this person is. Uh, let's see, five meters would be 39 inches, so 40. So um, 200 inches tall. <laughs> which is, uh, I don't know, um, over 10 feet, almost 20 feet tall. So it makes no sense. That, that's the, trying to show you a good ex example of where, why we don't use this for outside of the range, because that just makes completely no sense. Professor, when you get the chance, can we go back to part F? Yes, of course. Thank you. F, yeah, F yes. So it's just we're with the trace, we're just typing in the values. So I want a, a 13 year old. So I type in 13. How do we get the, a, the graph though? Oh, the line? Okay. Yeah. So, so go to y equals and you type the line in. Uh, y equals and you type. Yeah, you type this what? equation. You oh, type the one that we put in part E? Yes. Or part, uh, part D. Part D. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So if you type okay. that equation in there, the X button is right here. It will, you can then get that line, and then you can find the values. Okay. 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 Thank you. No problem. And so, all the rest of it is, and then, what is the slope? What is this of line of least squared best fit? What are, they've called it many different things: regression line. Um, what is the slope and what does it mean? So, so that's really all of it. I mean, it, we I just did actually all the problems. <laughs> um, there's, uh, there's, question, sorry. yeah, of course, sure. Um, so when I put in the values there on the y equals, yes, um, nothing happens when I press enter. Uh, so then go to graph. Oh, not enter? 
Well, you put, you hit enter to, to to finish it off, and then you go to graph. So when you're once you finish typing, that was weird. You hit enter, and um, now go to graph, and then it shows up. Okay. So after you press the equi the second value, then you press X, and then enter, Correct. and then graph. Yes. Oh, okay. Let me try that again. Uh, how do we get the windows? Okay, so to change the windows um, on the calculator, it's uh, zoom stat okay. allows us to get it just to see the space that in the statistics. If we go to window, we can type in whatever values we want. So because we need a, a 63 year old man, I just wanted to make sure I have more than 63. So I just typed in something bigger than 63. And then I didn't know how tall the person was going to be. So I just picked a really large number and hoped that it would fit. So I have to change my x, x maximum and y maximum. I might have to change my minimums depending. On so if they'd ask me for the height of, um, you know, if we'd started this at like four years old and gone to you know 15, and then they asked you for the height of a two-year-old, you'd have to change the the x value, the um, x values to make sure that that was adjusted and make sure the y values were adjusted. So, professor. Yes. So when I um so when I try to graph it, I can't, yep. I don't see the line. It's like off to the left side, and I get the whole like uh, four sections of a, of a graph. Oh, OK. I know what you OK. So if you do zoom stat. Yeah, I tried that too. It didn't. It's, I still shows me the same. I don't get that at all. You don't get this when you hit zoom stat? No. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have your data in your statistics? So when you did edit, you should have yes, your data in there. OK. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Because I'm able to, I have all my data in because I'm able to get um, the value. The regression, from right. Um, I know. Do you have it in stat plot? So go to stat plot, make sure your, your stat plot is on. So second, second y, y equals. And then make sure whichever one. So plot one is on. And doing a uh, scatter plot. How do I turn it on? Just press enter. Just press enter on over okay. the on. Yep. Okay. So that would be that explain that 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 should fix it. Okay. And then make sure that this first one here is chosen. Okay, because awesome. what we used to have. Okay. Okay. And now if you do zoom stat, it should work. Okay. Is this going to be on chap the chapter test? Yes. The, the chapter three test? Yeah, yeah, test, test three. Yes, this is on test three. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. It worked. Yay. So yeah. you should be set up for the test. So that, that so you should, because you already have it on, it won't, it won't turn off. It won't turn, turn off. Turn it and off. Have, okay. And I won't right. have to turn the diagnostic on again either, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Unless you reset your, unless you reset your calculator, which means you've taken out all the batteries, um, you won't have to do anything. Okay, so perfect. We'll be on. So that's why I said I don't know why they just don't turn it on because it just runs in the background and it only works for this one for regression. It doesn't do anything else <laughs> that I know of. So I don't know why they just don't have it on. Okay. Like there's no there's no need for there for it to ever be off is really the the thing I I like it should just be it the, the it you shouldn't have an on key like it should just be there and give you the, the values. Right. Um, so going back to part F on question three, when it says find the estimate average height for the one year old, do you use the stock graph in order to figure that out or? So once you're in the graph, um, you, you see the two lines? You see the line yeah. and the dots? OK. So if you go to trace, trace, OK, the first one gives you the dots. So if I trace along, it'll show me the values that I plugged in. Mm -hmm. If I move 
up or down, it switches between all the lines that are possible. So this gives me the equation that I typed in. And when I trace, it gives me you know, weird decimal values, but I can type in a number. I can type in two, and it will find me the height of a two-year-old. Um, how do you type in the number? You type in the number on x? Uh, so once this equation is here, y equal y1 equals this. Okay. I just type a number in, and it changes the x value. Oh, so to find the one-year-old, we just press one. Yep. Okay. And then enter. Okay. So from e down. Okay. So, um, Juliet, once you get the equation in, E is just the um, correlation, correlation coefficient. So, if you have that on, you have to turn diagnostic on. That's just that number right there. Okay. And then to calculate these things, you want to have it go into the, um, you want to put the equation that you got right here, this a plus bx equation, into y equals so you can graph it and then use that to calculate those values. The other, I mean, the other thing you could do is by hand. You could type in, you could plug on one in here, do, all right, this is 65, second quit. 65.088 plus 7.095 times 1. And I find my value. And then I do it again for a 13-year-old. And I get that value. And then I do it again, second enter, and I do it again, and I change... Uh, the 63 year old and I hit enter and it gives me so I can just do that you know you don't have to use a trace but since it's already on the graph you know you can use that it just saves you from so there's places many ways you can do this it's it's just because you're just doing the math you're just having the calculator do it so one way or the other you're putting in the x value so you could just do that and it's you know, just as easy awesome so is this all we're going over for this class? That's it. Um, the test is – oh, remember how I told you I wanted you to go to M&M's? I figured out something that I'm going to do, and I can do it on the com calculator so you guys don't have to go out into the world and, and possibly expose yourselves to you know, killer viruses. And, and if you've already done it, just eat the M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> That's a treat. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a thing uh, come up with a random roll of dice, and we're gonna see sh did they come out evenly, you know. So I, I I did that in my sleep this morning, so like in a dream. Cool. So, um, and, um, I, I, I have weird dreams. <laughs> so that video you did for this homework, are you gonna do? For yes, I will 11? do that for for chapter eleven. I'll do. A uh, few problems. Like I said, I only did one question because they were all, like, all, the all exactly the same, right? So but, I'll, I'll try to make sure I get the, this, all of the, the different ones done. So I don't remember how many there are in eleven. I think there's only one or two types of questions. So um, you only may, you might only see two videos, but I'll let you know when I'm doing them. So in the first one, I'll say okay. Well, there, there are only two types, even though there's yeah. I think there's only like four problems. It's not like there's a lot of problems either. Right. Um, yeah, it was super helpful. And then again, if we have any questions, you know, next right. class. Um, so chapter 11, there's four problems. So, oh, wow. there's, you know, um, there's two different types. Okay. So I'll do, I'll do probably number one and number three or something like that. And okay, that'd be cool. Maybe I'll do number four and number three because... You know, like people have a hard time understanding what. Um, well, we'll do we'll do two as the um, the test thing I'm going to show you. So where it's equal evenly distributed. So I'll show you one and I'll show you three, I guess. From okay. Next week. Okay. All right. Okay. And Thank so um, and so the last test is on chapter 11 and 13. So that'll be open in a couple weeks, and you'll have that to do. Sweet. Um, sweet. 
is. Let me just look quickly to see how everybody's grades are um, overall. I think everybody's doing fine. Us, should we do the, um, the... So unless you're Frankie, um, you don't need to do the final. So okay. even, even you, Steve, who uh, screwed up the um, <laughs> last test, last test you, still, you still have an A. So oh my gosh, um, me too. I failed. Okay, every, everybody has an A at the moment. Okay. So um, you don't need at this. I'll, I will let you know if you need to do the final. Um, and uh, so unless you know you guys really bomb test three, you won't even have to do test four because I dropped the lowest test, and so you all have A's. So A's and A minuses. So it's not like um, anything is you know horrible. Okay. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. So you guys are all doing really. This is like the, usually I have A's and B's, um, and then a bunch of F's. You know because people don't do the stuff. So. But we're um, a good class. You are. You all <laughs> shut up and, and have been working hard. So some of you even have a hundred on the homework, and I'm not quite sure how that happened. But because um, there's always like a question or two that just doesn't get done. Um, so, but one yeah. of somebody has a home a hundred on the homework. So that's awesome. Um, and you know, so you guys are all doing well. Um, and like I said, so after this third test, I'll let you know even if you have to do the fourth test. <laughs> All right? Okay. okay. So. Yes. Are you going to stay right. on for a little longer, Professor? Yeah, I'll, stay, I'll stay on for as long as you need me to. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm oh, sorry. I, if you're all done, if you got it all, I will wave by. Um, okay. Have a good day, and I will talk to you next week, same time. Um, and I'll have that video out sometime during the week. Um, probably Wednesday or so. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, professor. Yes. So on part I on question three, when I try to type in the sixty-two, um, yes, it's for a, the X, it gives you an error. Yes. Okay. So the reason is is because it do, it's not on the window. So if you look in your window, um, notice it only goes up to 15 or 20 or whatever. You mm -hmm. need to, it's not going to work because this number is not in the domain. So you have to just change it. So if you go to window Sorry, and turn to, to get 65, there. Uh -huh. so you go to window. Okay, window, change my max. Change your max is on both of them. So X max awesome. and Y max. So Make this one, you know, a thousand or something like that. Okay. And then go back and try. And now, when you go to graph, right now, when you go to graph, you can see it. It extends out, and so now you can do the work. Do I press graph or do I press trace? So go to graph, and then you can see it, and then go to then do trace. And then trace. Okay. okay. And then press in sixty-two. And then and then type in sixty-two. Yes. Oh, I see. Thank you. Okay. Um, one more question before we sign off. Um, yes. Sorry. Right. Um, so how, how do we get to when we plug in the y value, the the y y one equals? How do we yes. get there? Oh, right here. This y equals. You just, just go here. that. And you do that after you plug in, you get the linear regression equation? Yeah, after you get the regression equation, you just type it in there. You just change it to whatever that is. Okay, perfect. Okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, no problem. Good luck. All right, have a good weekend. Bye, right. right, you too. Bye, Steve. Bye. Bye. Um, so, Renee, I think is good. You, you had the question about the... Um, uh, test, I think, it, uh, the final project. So unless you have an unless you, you have an A, so you don't need to do the final. Cool. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So unless you ha unless you don't have an A, that's the only time you have to do the final. Woo! Okay. Big scary cat. Big <laughs> scary cat. <laughs> All right. Um, but other than that, that's the only those are the only people I usually worry about who has the final is you know 
if you don't have an A. So, because I don't want to ruin people's grade. I just want to help people in that stuff. So, okay. And Brenda is good. And Juliet. Um, so, to get the uh, significance level, there is a, um, in Chapter 12, there's a link. Right here, this value, this this page brings up this page in your book. And what you do is you just, how many ever things there are. So if the question has um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kids, we do seven minus two, we get to five. And we compare our uh, our correlation to this number. If it's higher, then um, it's significant. That's all you have to do. There's an actual test, but the, they made it life easy and they said, okay, here's a table. Um, here's the values that you have to compare it to. If it's bigger than this value, just you ignore the negative. So if the value, so you have a 0.921 and this is 0.754, it's bigger. All right. And so that's all you have to do. And the correlation is R, correct. And how do I do part J? Part J. Ah. Okay. So you need part C. And it asks us what is the slope? So these two is the slope. Remember, the slope is just how much changes as things go along. Well, what's happening is that as you get older, you get taller, and you get taller by seven centimeters. Okay, this is your slope. All right. What does it mean? Well, because it's positive, it increases as your age gets, as you go up in age by one year, your height increases by the size of the slope. And that's all that is. They're just asking you to explain what slope is. If they'd ask you to explain what the b, what the um, y-intercept was, that's you know the height you are when you're born. So everybody starts out at 65 centimeters, and then goes from there. That's what that's saying. All right, great. Um, any other questions? No? All right. I'm going to try to figure hi, out how to say it. Yes. Hi, Professor. Oh, hi. Yes. Hi, Renee. Um, yeah, I I missed um, last week. So oh, what last week. Okay. Something okay. I don't know. Okay. So um, I made a video. I, I didn't record this last week. So I've recorded this week, but I don't know how to get it. So I don't know if that's going to oh, how that's gonna work anyway. Um, but so there's a video uh, that I sent out that had how to do the questions for um, chapter 10. Um, I had like a couple of video, uh, there were like four videos or something like that. It's in a playlist. I, it's in the announcements. There's a link to it. Um, oh. So if you get that, and it should be also in your email because um, I'd emailed it to the, you know, your school email. So if you go to those, either of those, you can watch those videos and it will show you how to do them. Um, okay. And then, okay. Okay, and, thank you. And that, and so I tried to, and I did that for this week, but I only made one video because the questions were all the same. So, um, <laughs> no, if you miss it, you're not gonna. Get, nobody's gonna get docked for missing stuff. This isn't. Um, I, I, you know, I, like this is one of those weird circumstances. I can't, you know, say that you're, um, you know, I, I, like. I can't even know if you like. I know you're here because I can see the list, but like. There are so many reasons that you know you might not be able to make this, so I'm not gonna like penalize anybody for not showing up to these. Okay. Okay. Um, Thanks. Because like this is we're we're in weird circumstances now, so and anything you can do is a plus as opposed to a minus. So that's why I'm not you know worrying about the final unless you, as long as you have an A, don't take the final. You know, like I don't want people to stress out about things that, because usually mm -hmm. it's a group project, and I'm like, I, it's hard enough to do it in class as a group. So 
having you try to do it on your own or do it in a group online is just, you know, hard. So I was I'm trying to make sure life goes along smoothly for people. And that's really all I care about at the moment. So, all right. Thank you. I don't even know how they're going to do. I don't even know how they're going to do course evaluations this year. They might not even do those, you know, so um, like the online ones, they send out to online people. I don't know what they're going to do. But, uh, so this may this whole semester may just be a wash, and I'm trying to make sure everybody gets through it and gets. We I'd rather I more care more about you being alive than you know um, stressing about you know getting a difference between an A and a B. <laughs> you know, so as long as you're doing well, I I'm gonna just say your guys are good. So like I said, everybody has an A or A minus, so nobody needs to do the final. Um, and unless somebody majorly messes up this next test, you don't even have to do test four. So we'll do the homework and then we'll be done. So unless you want to do the test, you know, and I'm not going to stop you. But um, uh, so I, I, that's where I'm looking at it at the moment. Okay. So I am going to sign off and try to figure out how to save this so you can, and then send it out to you guys. So you can use it if you need to. And um, I wish you the best of luck for the week. Uh, the test is due in two weeks, so you know, take your time and do it right. Um, and have a good week, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye. All right, I need to stop sharing. I need.